couple of times where I said, I'm going to step away from this, was breaking my heart. I've always had my demons that I've battled with. Like a determination self-destruct. Why do we do this again? There's a huge fear of not coming home to my family and not being there for the, my kids. I really don't want to have those thoughts going through my head while I'm trying to do what I do. I really wish we would stop making movies about those dudes, worshipping those dudes who are just selfish pricks who will not question their need to dominate because that's actually at the root of that. There's two things going on with men like that. And being a climber myself, having worked in outdoor adventure for m a lot of my 20s, watched two different people die right in front of me on the river because of men. Somebody who chased adrenaline the same way these men chase adrenaline. It's an addiction. And we need to start looking at it like that. Because the way that we talk about these like explorers and stuff, without at the same time criticizing how reckless and unbelievably selfish they are and how much they exploit the women in their lives in particular, it is so irresponsible and is perpetuating not only patriarchy, but white supremacy culture and the colonizer mindset and how this man, this is nothing against him. I'm sure he has a good heart, but he clearly has either a lot of trauma that he won't deal with or some sort of mental health stuff that he won't really deal with. And he's using surfing or the adrenaline, the drug of adrenaline to avoid dealing with himself. And all the people who love him are paying a hefty price, including his children and especially his wife and his brother chases him around picking him up and saving his butt whenever he insists on another big way. I talk a lot on here about so many men. And I say this as a woman who lived like a man for a long time. Tomboy, an enormous amount of childhood trauma that I didn't know I had and I kept running and running and running and running and running, whether it was in self-destructive behaviors like eating disorders or, you know, drugs and alcohol or chasing fear so that I could, it gave me a sense of power. It gave me a sense of like, oh, I'm facing my demons. And that's not at all what I was doing. I was running from those demons. I was actually being chased by those demons. I wasn't chasing them. And beating the demon of a, a thousand foot rock wall that I don't die on, a false sense of security, a false sense of confidence. When at the end of the day, I was my own worst enemy. Somehow the, the, the elements, mother nature, falling off of rock walls or drowning in rivers that I was working on, somehow that did not take my life. But the thing that, the two things that almost did take my life, dating a man who won't deal with his trauma, or myself through my own self-destructive behavior. That dude is a danger to himself. And because he won't deal with it, because he keeps chasing monsters, is literally the name of his film, everyone who loves him pays a hefty price. It is so hard to love somebody who is self-destructive. Anybody who's ever loved an addict knows this. Men who are into extreme sports like that are the same as an addict. Yet for some reason, we do not judge them the way we judge addiction. The root cause is the same. I have an enormous amount of love and empathy for people with addictions as somebody who had them. The way we glorify it still, the way it perpetuates patriarchy and white supremacy culture, capitalism, and all of this stuff of like, domination and who's the best and who is this individual who defeats everything at the price of everyone else this idea of needing to conquer new things Did, does it occur to these men that needing to conquer and discover new things might be the colonial mindset and also be rooted in their own misogyny i want you to look at the way this man talks about the ocean and i want you to replace it with woman so just this one interview alone was about this guy and his movie that came out that was about him that did not at all deep dive into why he does this but rather almost glorified it and then you know showed a little bit of the impact it has on the people who love him not even because the thing is is that when these men get injured and they will it's almost always women who will be taking care of them till the day they die if they don't die doing the thing they love it is going to be women their mothers their wives their girlfriends their daughters their sisters it is never men, okay, not never, but usually it's not men who have to pick up the pieces of these men's recklessness and selfishness and need to conquer things. In this case, mother nature. And all of it, again, is rooted in their refusal to really go in, look at themselves, question themselves. Not only any trauma, any of their past, any of their own feelings, but also white supremacy culture. The thing that makes them need to be number one.
at the expense of everybody. The need to be able to do something just because, but without a good reason. To go explore things because that's their right. It's their God-given right as a white man. To just go find things and discover things instead of just leaving things alone. All of that, in my opinion, is rooted in running. Literally anything to avoid yourself. And men who do this leave so much wreckage in their past the same way addicts do. Feeling dead inside, they turn to substances. Feeling dead inside, he goes to the ocean. And then when he almost dies, his wife and his kids and his dad, his family, his whole family is traumatized and has to nurse him back to health. But okay, we're supposed to worship this man. God, a man torn between his innate primal desire to explore the vast unknown of, uh, of the unridden. I want y'all to really make a connection between like purity culture, virginity, dominating women slash mother nature, which is another reason why we are in this hell hole that we're in because part of white supremacy culture is dominating nature, which is why the world is burning. So you, you, you really, part of the personal work that we have to do is also seeing how this affects our mindset and how absolutely self-destructive it is and as destructive it is to the whole world. He admits that he's down to a few of his nine lives. I know that feeling. I now recognize how hard it must have been to be my mother and my sister and my father and all the, you know, my friend. And even though I still do adventurous stuff, now that I've done a lot of this healing, I absolutely consider the risks and I take more calculated risks because I don't want to die. I don't want to die. And these guys want to die. They're not afraid of death. What they're also not afraid of is all of the trauma they're going to cause other people if they die. Men like this do not need to be having children or marrying anybody. And yet they always do. They always do because they know if they get injured, they're screwed and they want their cake and have and eat it too. You can't do both. You can't be a lone wolf, reckless, selfish, gone all the time and call yourself a father. But, oh, you shun convention. No, that's not what he's doing. I understand. I like the rebellious mindset, right? I'm not against like not conforming. This dude and so many climbers and outdoor folks think that it's like not, conf they're not conforming, that we're rebels. We're not rebels. I'm all about fighting the man, but this man didn't fight the man. He's literally the epitome of the man. Selfish, entitled, reckless, doesn't care about his community at all. Individualist mindset, like dude, you are the man. He's always wanting to push that further, the more remote, the more dangerous felt so much more free out there than on land. Dude, you are not the little mermaid. You do not come from the ocean. Whatever reason, you cannot be at home within your own body, within your own mind, and even on land. You should question that. And so some of his friends say that, you know, he's, so, he's special. He can decipher the code, which is mean figure out how waves work so he can conquer them. He's like, yeah, when I'm out there, I'm like, why am I here again? Why am I doing this? He doesn't really seem to question that enough. You're just looking at too many things that want to eat you up and kill you. You're trying to synchronize with the ocean and to gel with the natural element, that raw power of the ocean. Y'all, this to me is so much rooted in being jealous of women, being people with uteruses giving all, like are re responsible for life are so jealous. It feels so obsolete. So they're constantly out trying to dominate women by being players, by, you know, being the head of household as the king baby, or dominate mother nature. I feel powerful and strong. So he chose the lone wolf life instead of the competitive surfing circuit. He wanted to be special. Basically, when he's not surfing, he's self-destructive. His family worries about that, so they, they, they don't say don't surf because they know he's going to get back into addiction if he doesn't surf. But surfing is an addiction. I mean, tell me this is not as dangerous as drinking and drugs. But the irony is that he calls it facing monster. You're not facing Jack. You are running from monster. We're supposed to worship you because you put yourself in danger, almost died, and now you get to be a hero or not dying from the thing that you almost caused. Do you know? This need to be a hero is such a big part of a lot of these outdoorsy men. Life is just so easy to them, especially if they don't face racism, sexism, ableism, and all this other stuff. Life is just so easy for them to create danger. They can survive and be a hero of their own actions. Then feel like they conquered mother nature. Let me know if y'all want a part two, because I'm not done.